Hello everyone, I am Bradley Swore, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellyn, Illinois. And this video today is going to look at recursion. <coughs> Excuse me. We have a couple problems to do. Uh, this is one of this is the activity section for me for my CIS 2542 course. And so let's just take a look at the problems. And both of these could be solved iteratively, meaning we could do this without recursion. But uh, in this case, we're going to try it out recursively. So my first function here, develop a recursive C++ function that determines how many times a given digit appears in an integer value. So I give you the function prototype. It takes two values. It takes the value itself. And it says, and then the value that, or the, the digit you're trying to search for. And it's going to go through here. And you can see that there's three twos in this, di in this number. And that's why this value should return three. So I have a few, you know, I have a few things here going on for testing. And so I'm going to go ahead and just set up my function int appearances. The hardest part for setting this up for me will be the spelling. Because my spelling just falls apart when I'm typing and talking and thinking. Okay, so there, there, at least this works now. I still get an error if I just return zero. Let me just see, I didn't test my code out here yet. Edit all my test code. Let's make sure this is all working. Compiles, links, and runs. And so you can see here, do I get a one? I don't know. Do I get a zero? These are false positives because I didn't do anything, right? So one, three, three. So I have some working code here. And so recursion is one of those things that it, you know, it's, you either get it or you don't. And it's like those, to me, I feel like recursion, a lot of it is kind of like 3D puzzles. Uh, those were big back, I don't know how many years ago, but those things where you stare at them and then the, the picture pops out at you eventually, it's like I could never see those things and one day it just, it's like, oh my goodness, I could do it and then I can't do it anymore. But with recursion, I haven't lost that ability. So for this appearances function, well, I'm, I'm going to presume positive values for the, for the value itself and I'm going to presume, you know, positive digits. I'm not going to do anything silly when it comes to negative values or anything like that. Um, but what I'm going to do is, how, you know, basically, is this a one-digit number? Is this a two-digit number? That's just kind of how the recursion works its way down to, is that you're going to take this value and you're going you're gonna to check the last digit, and then you're going to cut it down, and then you're going to check the last digit, and you're going to cut it down, and you're going to check the last digit. And you know you've hit your base case, you know the recursion has ended when you're down to a one-digit number. And so every integer value that you pass in has to have at least one digit in it. Zero is one digit, and anything from zero to nine is one digit, and ten and up. So that could be my base case. So if my value is less than ten, return is my value equal to the search. Because if, I, if the last value, if this is like 16, and I do a, you know, one recursion, the value left over will be a 1. I'll, you know, because the six, will have be, the 6 will have been cut off. So I'm left with the 1. And if I'm searching for a 1, yeah, I'll return a 1 here in this case. Um, so that's what I want to do for the base case. And so otherwise, I am going to return... This is the fun part here. I'm going to do appearances. See, I was saying about my spelling. Appearances value divided by 10, comma, search, plus value mod 10, comma, search. So this is what we do if there's a, if the value is a one digit number and this is what we do if we end up with it with a two or you know a two or more uh, digit number. So this is saying if there's a one digit number go ahead and just search the last digit and you're out. Otherwise we're going to recurse. And it just sounds like we're swearing, but what we're going to do is we need to cut off that last digit, but we also need to make also need to check to see if that digit oops, I'm, what's a comma doing there? Um, value mod 10 equals search. Sorry about that. Um, we also need to check that if that last digit is a search value, you know, is the, is the value I'm searching for. So this should do it. And there we go. One, and we could test it even more. I'm not going to bother. I'm pretty, pretty confident that we did this right. Um, and I see a lot of students forget 
the value zero when they set these things up. So I figure I'll just give you guys the answer. And I, I hope you guys are watching the videos after you've made a good faith effort at trying to solve the problem because just having the answer in front of you does not really teach you much if you could just follow through it step by step before you even try to do any of these things. So I'm really hoping that you're using these things after you've thought about the problems and maybe tried to solve them before you come back and go, well, how would I do this? How do I get this problem? How do I solve this? But I can one line this thing just to finish this. You know, it's like I can use the ternary operator here. I can just say return and I could say value is less than 10. Return this. And I'm going to say, is this easier? Coming from my way of thinking, no, I can't stand the ternary operator sometimes. Oops. But you can kind of think of things this way. Even though it's on more than one line of code, you can think of it that way. And uh, so this is basically saying return. Just, I'm going to return something. What am I going to return? Is the value less than 10? Yes. Then return this. False. Return that. And it just, it's an easy way, you know, it's, well, it's, it's the ternary operator, but you get the exact same results no matter what you do here. So that solves problem one, and now I'm ready to move on to problem two. And so problem two here, let me do before, I, I'll fix this up in a second. You won't notice it probably. But now I want to develop a recursive C++ function that turns a number into its base six equivalent. And so like if, you know, like we use, uh, in, we use base two, we use base eight, we use base 16 and we use base 10 as computer scientists. The whole rest of the world basically use base 10 and that is it. But in this case, we can convert to any base we want. We can, you know, we're going to use base 6 for this example. So this is, you know, so what does that mean? You know, I have a few videos here. You can look at this video here. You can look at this video here. When it comes to, you know, how do you, what is base six? What does that mean for you? Uh, I'm not here to have that discussion. That discussion uh, at some point in your mathematical and computer science careers up to now, you should have had that, should have had that discussion. Maybe you're not pros at base conversions, but if you end up taking my assembly language courses, you will end up, or you watch those videos that I have in my, uh, in my other playlists, you will become pros at least at base 2, base 10, and base 16 and all the conversions. And so this number 5 million, is it 5 million? 5 million 324,422 comes into 31004203. And notice for base 6, no no value here. It's hard to notice, but no value here will be larger than a 5. Just like we in, we live in our base 10 world. And none of our digits are above a 9. That's why we have a 0 through 9. That's how we have 10 digits. That's why we call it base 10. And so uh, I'm going to call it integer. I'm just, I'll just call it base 6. I'll just, call, I'll just call it base. Okay. So it's the same process. I, yeah, I think I have everything. Give me a second here. I'll set up some, uh, I'll, I'll set up some examples here to prove everything's working. Okay. So you can see I have something set up here. It prints out for all the values from 0 to 216. And right now, obviously, it's printing out zeros because we haven't written the function yet. And I am also aware that this function is asking you to print out a string. And I'm going to do this with integer values, but you can very easily convert if you wanted to um, from int to string. You know, you have all the, those functions are available to us nowadays. And so it's the same process, kind of, as we were doing in the recursive function previously for number one. It's because if we can, I'm not going to bother ternarying it this time. If the value is less than six, then what I can do is I can return value mod six. Because if the value is zero, one, two, three, four, or five, zero, zero, one, two, three, four, or five, yes, those values will basically be exactly the same as, let me just return zero, as they are in base 10. So and everything else will fall apart. So let me run this. Now, why is everything so small now? I don't know. But you can see now from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, those are correct. And now as we move up to two digit numbers in base 6, 6 should be 1, 0 because it's, you know, 6 plus 0 and so forth and so on. We, we kind of need to go ahead and do kind of the same thing here. And we need to do, okay, give me 10 times, 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is where the fun of this is, is that even though it's a base six number, we're going to be returning it as an integer. This is where I'll do, I'll, I'll convert this into strings uh, once I'm done having my fun doing this as an integer. But I, could, but I have to do it 10 times because I'm converting this into a base 10 number that gets returned, even though it is technically a base six number. I, if, if that made no sense to you whatsoever, then don't worry about that. But I would say 10 times... Uh, base 6 of value divided by 6 plus value mod 6. That should do it. Let me see if that does. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. We'll figure out. My, I have a parenthesis I know I have to add. But let me try this now. Let's see where we're at. So let's see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 0, 0, 5, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then when we get to 36, we're up to 100, 72 is 200, 108 is 300, and so forth and so on. So I think that pretty much well covers what we're trying to do here. And, it, and so now converting this into a string should be pretty simple, right? So... Let me go ahead and do all that. Of course, this is all going to heck as I'm as I'm fixing everything up. Okay, so I don't know where we're at. My kid was just screaming at me that we have wasps <laughs> outside, so I took care of that. I am now back. Um, so let's see, a value is less than six. Let's see where we're at. I want to do std two string. I might need to include the string class. I'm not sure. Oops, I'm going to have to include string to make this work. I hate it when it just, it's like, <laughs> you want something you've never heard of before? Sure. Sort of like autocorrect on your phone. Like, I've never put that word in my life. What are you trying to do? So you take this value and you convert it into a string. Oh, I meant two string, not just string. Two string. And there it goes. And, the, and then you can just change this to, it's two digits. And we got to make sure that we put each digit in the right order. And so, yep, 10 times base 6. So, yes, so we're going to have to, um, hmm. I guess we don't need that. We won't need this because we're not, we're going to be putting the digits in one by one by one. So let me just go back here and let me just say this. I can just say uh, std2 string here. I'm going to copy this. I don't have to do it three times. Type it over, but here is one digit, and here is the next. And let me just drag this over a little bit. And let's, oop, okay, and now we can run this. Not happy with this. Oop, I don't need to two-string it, because it's going to return it as a base six. It's already going to return it as a string. So I can concatenate the two strings together, and I think that should do it. The fun of programming is... The magic of finding out will it actually do what I think it will do and oh there's 216 that's 1000 and you can see we're right back where we were and I forgot at the end I put yeah there's 0 there's 10 there's 20 uh, there's 36 is 100 and 72 is 200 and so forth and that last digit here oops there we go 5324422 is 31004203 so yes so there, I showed you how to do it as an integer, and now I've shown you how to do it as a string. So all recursion comes down to these base cases, because if you're recursing and you're calling the recursion, 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 if you're never getting out, as much as you think that's going to infinite loop, that's what we call a stack overflow. Your program will crash. It won't run forever. It will crash eventually, because all of the space that your stack, your runtime stack, you only have so much space set aside in your in RAM for that, and as you keep recursing, eventually you'll break the stack because you've run out of space. So you have to watch out for that kind of stuff here. So that covers this homework assignment or this uh, this uh, activity. Uh, if you have any questions or if I misspoke about something, which is very well possible since <laughs> eh, one wasp. Uh, ruined my child's world there for a couple of minutes so uh, and I just lost my train of thought so if anything going on please comment below or send me an email at swordb at cod.edu um, and as always thanks for sticking it out with me hope you enjoyed the video hope you learned something from this and uh, have a great day and I'll see you next time